By this point, you can tell that I am moving and I'm leaving Toronto. In case you guys are new here, my name is Celine. I moved to Toronto in 2019. I was new throughout high school. I wanted to try living somewhere else. I just didn't know where, I didn't know under what circumstances. It's crazy to think now looking back that I came to the big city in Canada. This is our biggest city in Canada, population wise. I made it, I did it. 21 year old me would be so proud, I think. That all leads me to where I am now. We are moving to Calgary. Calgary is on the Western side of Canada. Some of you might be familiar with Banff, which is very close to Calgary. Beautiful mountains and a lot of different things about Calgary that we are excited for. I think it'd be interesting in the future. Let me know if you guys are interested actually, in talking a bit more about the different places that I have lived. I think once we actually make the move and get settled in because we're in the middle of doing a lot of things. So that leads me to what I've been up to. We have been decluttering, cleaning. I've been getting myself organized with some packing supplies, which is what we're starting to actually use now. Today is the 3rd of May and we are leaving in 27, 28 days from now, so that's kind of wild. I've also created a Notion template. I might share it in the future, but it's very chaotic and personal right now. This is my packing list. I'm trying to keep organized with different rooms in the house or the apartment, just like items that we're gonna need to keep track of. There's also a moving timeline. It's hard to see on the phone view of this, but it just has like every single thing listed out. At this current moment, I'm trying to declutter first and then simultaneously start packing things that we don't use on a regular basis. In terms of moving supplies that I have so far, these boxes I got, these are from Amazon. They come in a pack of 15. These are considered small boxes, but I mean, for reference of my hand, that's how big it is. I did get bigger boxes, but I'm kind of worried that they're gonna be massive <laughs> now that I've seen the small size. I got a pack of bubble wrap. I got this protective wrap, some Sharpie two of the tapes for the boxes. I feel like we always run out of tape. Some of you might be wondering, why are you packing so early? The reason I wanna get started is honestly because I have never been a calm packer and we have different events coming up, we're working, it's gonna be a lot. And everything that I've seen has said to try to get started earlier. I've never tried to pack earlier. I'm just always so last minute. So if anyone needs inspiration to try to pack earlier, this is your inspiration. Another thing I wanted to quickly explain is how we're actually gonna move, how we're gonna get there and what to expect coming up. We are gonna be driving from Toronto to Calgary. So over the course of five days, we will be on the road and we are so excited because there's definitely parts of Canada that we've never seen and wouldn't ever really think of going to, not because of any reason, but it's just you never take as much time to explore your own backyard or your own home, if that makes sense. It's also probably gonna be a bit tiring. So I'm excited to see how that all comes together. And I wanna make sure that we have things as prepared as possible before we actually start the journey just to make sure that we're in the best headspace as we can be. Nothing would be worse than starting the drive when we're both exhausted and cranky. I did want to mention I found this book which is called World Atlas. My boyfriend got this from me kind of as a joke a while ago. I'm very, very, very bad at geography. It's honestly shameful. Let me see if I can point out where we're moving to. Canada is 45. We are currently around here in this area and then we will be going all the way over to this little area from here to here. As I'm filming, I just got an email and we have been approved for the condo that we just applied for. I'm so freaking stoked. I was actually just talking to a coworker and they were asking me how we're gonna go about this. Basically, we just did a virtual tour of the place and that's what we have been doing because we're not physically in Calgary yet. Let me just say that in terms of my experience with this, I've actually done that the first time I moved in in Toronto, I wanted a place to 
have it secured before moving there and if that's what you want and you don't have someone physically there then the options you have i think are you can find somewhere short term to live and then look for places while you get there or you can try to do virtual tours and make some type of decision based off of that which is what we did in this case but i'm obsessed with this building and i'm not going to show you guys until we actually get there so that is very very exciting i'm going to spend a little more time getting i think this area cleaned up It is now several days later. Life has been lifing for sure. We've made a lot of progress when it comes to packing. I've been slowly taking things that are not like everyday use items and putting those away, trying to declutter as much as I can. It's taking multiple rounds for me to just start throwing things out, which is what I'm doing. We have boxes upon more boxes and bags and just all the things everywhere right now but slowly but surely we're making our way through a quick update on our apartment hunt last time i chatted with you i had actually said that we found a place and were approved for a place that we really liked and i was not really sure whether to share this part but we aren't going to be moving forward with that place and there's a couple things that kind of came up in our thought process which i think are important things to think about basically we currently live in a one bed plus den in downtown toronto and it is about 650 square feet in our move one of the main things that i really wanted us to find was a space that had two Two bedrooms because of a couple of things. One, I work from home. A lot of time is spent at home and I need a space that is functional that is not completely dark because there's a den right now and that den does not get any sunlight. So two bedrooms and both that would actually have access to natural light. The other thing is if there's ever a family that comes to visit, we wanted a space to be able to host people because, or even friends, because it's just a nice thing to be able to invite people to visit and not have them pay for a hotel or an Airbnb and we ran into that issue when my family's come to visit so it's just something that I felt I really wanted and have always wanted so those are the two main reasons. The space that we found was in a practically new building. It had all the latest and greatest amenities. The area was quite nice and I do like it, but that's not where I actually had been envisioning we would live. But we saw the space, we fell in love with it, and that's why we got super excited. Now, here's the thing. This place was actually $400 more a month than what we're paying now. And it's not to say that we wouldn't be able to afford it, but I think this is the whole aspect of lifestyle creep because even in downtown or if you're looking for a place in your own hometown i think there's always going to be these like new places and they are very often the ones that are looking for more and more rent and just because it has all these shiny amenities or just because it's like brand new is it actually really worth it is something that i encourage people to think about when you're looking for a place to live so lo and behold we actually found another space and it is 850 50 square feet. It is actually less than what we're paying. Not by a lot, but I think it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to share that because it's like a whole thing, but if there's anything you can take away from that, it's just that I actually heard someone talking about this recently with regards to lifestyle creep and the ways that we put certain lifestyles on a pedestal and you just imagine having to live in luxury condos or you have to be in a high rise to be deemed successful and if you want those things, sure, but ask yourself truly if you really deep down want those things for yourself. It's not to say that the place we found now is 100% perfect but it just makes so much more sense based off of like everything so I'm really excited I'm gonna actually go into my closet now and try to get some stuff packed away we're just gonna take a moment to appreciate this closet and the decluttering video we've done all the special memories and the new closet is gonna be bigger which I am excited about so it's actually way later. I was gonna get into my closet, but then I was trying to get myself ready because there was two bookings 
for viewings that were gonna happen, which I can't remember if I talked about this before, but basically we are renting, so our landlord has this place up for rent. That's just part of the process. I feel like when I last moved out of my previous apartment, it was very seamless. This has been an actual disaster <laughs> so far. I mean, I don't know. Basically, my landlord had first tried to rent this place just on her own, which is how we've been running it. Basically, long story short, she decided to handle it with a realtor. So they've just started working on this listing as of, I don't know, like a couple days ago. So far, people have been booking viewings, which is great. Honestly, as someone that's living here, the sooner that somebody can decide they wanna live here, the sooner I can stop worrying about viewings and showings and all that type of stuff. So I am so ready for that. However, no one's actually come to see the place, which is mildly concerning, but not my problem. So somebody had booked it for today when I was working and I was like, I can't make it. I have meetings during that time, which I actually did. That time came around and somebody knocked on the door literally right as I was about to start. <laughs> A meeting and then we had two people that were supposed to come at 6 and 6 30 neither of whom showed up which is just kind of like how did all three bookings today get messed up i'm trying to be accommodating but it's just a little frustrating because we tried to take bean out or my boyfriend took bean out just so like there wasn't you know a dog that was distracting or anything when they came in but then nobody even showed up and then we're trying to make dinner because we're hungry and just little things like that. But again, the sooner somebody can decide they want to live here, the better. And hopefully someone actually shows up. It is the next day and with another day comes another cancellation for an apartment viewing. I've been vacuuming so many times like in anticipation of somebody to come. I do vacuum multiple times a week, but I've been doing it extra because I just thought someone was going to come today and they didn't so that was kind of annoying i also had my therapist appointment my current therapist can only practice in ontario so she's not going to be able to be my therapist anymore which is definitely sad but because we've talked about it so many times i'm not bothered by it because we've already been planning for this but when we did have our call she's like where are you i thought you're packing and i still see stuff on the wall and i'm like yeah okay we we have boxes here the progress is being made but yes there's still stuff on the wall so i think i'm gonna start getting that stuff down because it seems like it makes sense we're not using that stuff it's just for decorative purposes and then i want to show you guys as well we do have this shelf that i cleared out i don't know what i'm gonna do with my plants yet because i kind of want to bring most of them like they have such sentimental value you know i got this plant when i first moved to toronto which is crazy this orchid was one of the first flowers that trevor ever bought me when we started dating so it's basically as old as our relationship he got me that bamboo as well so i just feel like they have some sentimental value that i'm not ready to let go of in the grand scheme of things it's actually not that many plants so i think i'm gonna try to find a way to bring them with us but that's lower in my priorities right now at this stage the main focus was packing away non-essential items or things that were decorative and just keep decluttering because this process really made me realize how much stuff we have that we truly don't need and this is certainly a theme that is going to continue in the next moving vlog so make sure to stick around for that really enjoyed just having time to do things around the city. So every time we stepped over it, water kept gushing out. If there's anything I can do, maybe I'll be open to the state. I really appreciate that. 